How's it going everyone? Today I'll be working on a tilt skillet that is not getting hot enough. So it is heating. Uh, it's not getting above about 250 even if they set it to 400 degrees. So uh, let's rip this baby apart and let's take some temperatures and let's go from there. And we'll just hit fast forward here. Hit her patter, let's get at her. All right, so let's go ahead and take some temperatures here. So let's set her to 325, heat indication lights on. We are heating and the unit has shut off. We are at 200 degrees, we're off by 125 degrees. So let's go ahead, pull up a schematic and see what's going on. All right, so let's map this bad boy out. So we come in here off our L1, we're coming through a three amp fuse. And then our L2, which is actually a neutral, is gonna make our B terminal hot. And our B terminal is right here. So here's a transformer. We're gonna bump it down to 24 volts. And then we're gonna come through here onto our pin seven. And then our hot side of our 24 volts gonna come through here, pin five. Then on the selector switch is gonna close. And then we're gonna come through a high limit. That's gonna close uh, our tilt switch. So our tilt switch is, it wants to make sure the skillet is in the down position. Once that closes, we're gonna to come to pin nine. And then our thermostat is getting power from A, which is all the way here, 120 volts in, B, our neutral side, okay? And what's gonna happen here is once we have a call for heat from our thermostat, Okay, so in this case, we are at 200 degrees. We're calling for 350. We should have had a call for heat. What happens in that point, once we get a call for heat, it'll actually jumper it to here. So nine and 10, imagine this is a little switch. We'll jump her up to here. We'll get our heat indication light, which we saw. And number 10 is gonna bring it up first to our relay coil, which we'll revisit in a minute. And we're gonna come through this combustion air switch. So what closes this combustion air switch? It's gonna be right here, this combustion blower. So how the combustion blower gets power is we're coming through this relay. This relay's open unless we have a coil close and our coil is closing right here because we got power off of pin 10. And then the coil will get its second side of power from here and that completes the blower circuit. Okay, the blower circuit needs to be complete. Why? Because we need this combustion uh, air switch to be closed. Okay, so once that completes, we're gonna, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna go to our 24 volts here. And then once we get power at this 24 volts, uh, we're gonna get our igniter and then we're gonna go for, and we're gonna send power to the gas valve. Okay, so as long as there is power here on this 24 volt. And obviously we need our ground circuit, so let's draw that out really quickly. It's piggybacking off of here. All right, so let me just clean this up really quickly. A lot going on there. Let's get back to the basics. So the main problem I see on these units is pin nine will be hot. So we have power here on pin nine, which is coming through our tilt switch and our limit. And it's just a straight shot to the A terminal on the transformer. And then what's happening is this switch doesn't close. So there's two reasons why this switch doesn't close. It's either this thermostat is bad or the thermostat sending the correct signal to this board and this board is bad. So nine out of 10 times I'm finding this board is bad. So an easy way to test it is we're gonna go see if we have power on pin nine. And if we have power on pin nine, and we don't have power on pin 10, we're gonna do an ohm test on this thermostat. If the ohm test pass, we need a board. And in this case, I think we're gonna need a board, but let's go through the troubleshooting. All right, and we also want to make sure that we're getting power to our board, our 120 volts, and that's supplied directly from here, pin A and pin B. All right, so let's start by testing pin six and seven. And we got 120 volts from the transformer to the board, that's good. And let's go test our pin nine now. And we're getting zero volts there, which is interesting. All right, so our pin nine here has no power, which is an interesting problem that I've never seen before. So let's just map this out. So off pin A, we're coming through this fuse. I know this fuse isn't blown because uh, the unit will continue to heat. Okay, as long as we go below, let's say 100 degrees, it'll heat. It's just off by 125 degrees. 
So we could be dropping power through this switch. Not super likely. Uh, I think we're dropping power either through this high limit or through this tilt switch. So let's start by going and testing this high limit and let's go from there. All right, so I'm going to test across the limit and we're getting 28 volts. That means it is open. All right, so I'm getting 28 volts across this high limit. So what does that mean? It's open. Okay, I'm testing potential difference. So I'm testing from this point to this point. If we had zero volts, it tells me the switch is closed or we don't have power coming through. So that means we would have lost power somewhere on this switch. But the fact that I'm getting 28 volts potential difference is telling me the high limit is open. We're only at 200 degrees. The high limit should not be open. So that means the high limit is faulty. All right, so I got a high limit. Let's go ahead and swap it out. Um, there's a trick here you want to open, put the skill in the open position and then you can work and see the burners and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and hit fast forward here and get this high limit swapped out. Last thing we're going to check is make sure the unit shuts off. So I set it to 400. Our heat light has come off. We're not tripping our high limit. Everything's all good here.